I would like to welcome you to Atala de Wipa, a channel dedicated to exploring the ancient world. In this episode, we will be exploring how and when the Persian Gulf became flooded by a rising ocean at the end of the last ice age. As explored in a previous video titled The Gulf Oasis, I explored how I removed the ocean in the Persian Gulf to reveal a lost landscape, an area science states as having housed the first humans that came out of Africa and developed the first proto-cities. This is a very detailed map of that lost world. With this, I can flood the gulf and watch what occurred meter by meter to the people that occupied this lost world. However, in order to raise the ocean into the gulf oasis, there is one very crucial piece of scientific data that is needed. That data can be found in Dr. Lambeck's paper titled Shoreline Reconstructions for the Persian Gulf Since the Last Glacial Maximum. In his report can be found a chart that summarizes his findings. On this chart, sites 57 and 58 are extremely important. Dr. Lambeck has been able to calculate the time in years and the depth at which the ocean reached these two unique geographical locations. This is the data we need in order to reflood the Persian Gulf. But before we do, a bit of math is needed. When looking at this graph, it illustrates that between the two sites in Dr. Lambeck's work, the ocean rose 31 meters over 3,200 years. When we divide this to find out how many years it took for the ocean to rise one meter, we see that the average time is approximately 100 years. To me, this seemed awfully quick. To put it into perspective, our ocean has risen approximately one foot globally since 1880. That is one third of a meter in 140 years. To confirm Dr. Lambeck's data, I turned to Dr. Fairbank's research. In his 2006 paper titled, Global Glacial Ice Volume and Last Glacial Maximum Duration for an Extended Barbados Sea Level Record, he published a similar chart to Dr. Lambeck's. In this chart, Fairbanks indicated that the oceans around the Caribbean islands had a similar velocity in ocean rise to the data Dr. Lambeck had calculated. I also turned to the data presented in the GISP2 Greenland Temperature Ice Core findings to support both men's conclusions. The data represented in this chart shows that around 13,000 BCE, the global temperatures began to rise quickly. This chart shows the drastic 10 degree rise in global temperature from 12,500 to 11,500 BCE with most of it occurring from 11,800 to 11,500 BCE. This is an abrupt end to the Ice Age and is the reason why both Lambeck's and Fairbank's work show a drastic rise in the level of ocean in such a small period of time, a time period that saw an abrupt end to the Younger Dryas event. I believe we can confirm that one meter every 100 years looks to be possible. So let us visit the Gulf Oasis and begin raising the ocean from a depth of 100 meters 13,800 years ago and stop at 11,400 years ago to a depth of 75 meters below current sea level. This will then fall in line with Dr. Lambeck's work. When looking at the Gulf Oasis 13,800 years ago, it becomes evident that the ocean had barely entered the western portion of the Straits of Hermos. As the ocean entered the Straits, it did so into a very narrow deep canyon. This canyon constrained the rising ocean, preventing it from flooding large areas of land as illustrated in the last few frames. By 12,800 BCE, the ocean had risen to a depth of 90 meters, a 10 meter rise that took approximately a thousand years. At this depth, 90 meters below current sea level, the ocean still lay within the canyon. However, I believe that this 10 meter rise could have taken longer than a thousand years, as I believe the rise of the ocean was exponential and not an average. Regardless, over the next 1,000 years and the next 10 meters of ocean rise, the ocean rises from 90 meters to a depth of 80 meters. As the ocean rises, the southern portion of the Straits of Hermos fill to capacity and begin to flood a large portion of land to the north of this canyon. As seen, this newly flooded area is surrounded by high cliffs. Even though the ocean had flooded a new area in the Straits of Hermos, the ocean was still contained and thus the Gulf Oasis was unchanged at this time in history. It is when the ocean reaches a depth of 80 meters at approximately 11,800 BCE, a catastrophic event was just around the corner, an event I believe our ancestors would have interpreted as a sign from a god and become the basis of an event within myth. For when the ocean reached a depth of 79 meters, the global temperature spiked and the ocean spilled into the smaller, deeper lake that surrounded the tide island and killed the ecosystems that were connected to it. Whether or not our ancestors foresaw the coming of this event is unanswerable. However, one can look at the possible reactions to such an event our ancestors may have had. Did they decide to leave or to stay? If the first proto-city did in fact develop on this tide island, as outlined in another of my videos titled The First City, 
How would you protect the flooding of this proto-city from the rising ocean with only mud, rock, and wood? The only answer I could come up with was to build a dam. A dam that surrounded the island could not only be built, but it could hold back the ocean at least another three to five meters. A temporary fix, though, and a building project that would have been some undertaking. This theory is explored in another video I have created titled The Wall. However, if people weren't convinced the ocean was rising from the first lake becoming flooded, when the ocean rose from 78 meters to 77 meters, it killed the largest freshwater lake this part of the world had ever known. It must have surely convinced any skeptic of the fact that the ocean was rising. This event would have been catastrophic to many ecosystems, but also to a way of life our ancestors had developed with this freshwater lake for over 50,000 years. That was a doozy of an event, one that I believe is echoed in the Enuma Elish myth narrative, a theory outlined in another video I have created titled The Enuma Elish. I believe this event signals the beginning of the migration of this earlier culture out of the Gulf Oasis in all directions, later creating some of the earliest empires to rule the earth.